Good morning, everybody. Yes, I hope you are ready for the class today. The course we are going to start is DCF, Digital Computer Fundamentals, PC Organization Maintenance. It's a course of three units that will last for 60 hours face to face, right? Of course, these 60 hours are not sufficient for you. That's why we reserve some time for you, right? So you will have to work hard because it's a course, it's a huge course, right? It's a course made of three units, as I told you. The course of uh, the unit of digital computer fundamentals, this will span three, of three chapters. The first chapter is about uh, signal fundamentals and multiplexing. Chapter two is about the character representation and the numbering systems. Chapter three, it's about uh, Boolean algebra and the logic circuits. Part two is may, it's about PC organization. That's uh, after covering the fundamentals, digital fundamentals, you know that the computer is nothing but uh, a digital system. And hence, after under learning underlying technologies, and hence we will start upper structure. That is PC organization. The computer you see, the computer you touch, right? And hence, we will cover this into three, with three chapters. One is PC organization and the structure. PC organization and the structures. Second part, because this chapter could be very huge, we did our best to make sure that it is divided into two. And we have dedicated the chapter four, five or for microprocessor fundamentals. Someone may ask, why did, have you taken this one off? Because this is a complex device which needed to be understood to be separated from the other parts. Indeed, in uh, courses uh, like uh, engineering courses, these ones, they even have it microprocessor programming one, microprocessor programming two. But uh, even though we are not uh, pure engineers, we need to understand this complex device. That's the reason why we have dedicated the complete chapter for this one. Chapter six, it's about the computer performance and PC building. Really, you want to buy a computer, you need to know why you should look for a given computer of given specifications. There are some factors which are behind the performance of the computer. Without taking into consideration these factors, then you will be buying a wrong one. That's it. It's about chapter six. And chapter seven and eight, which constitute part three, it's about maintenance. See, maintenance is also a huge part. We have divided it into two. The first one is preventive maintenance. The second is, or the last chapter is about uh, troubleshooting. That is curative maintenance. W then, uh, when you look at this, these three, chapter, these three parts, they complement each other. You should start by the underlying technologies of your computer. And then after understanding uh, those technologies, those are fundamentals, you don't even touch them. Say, for example, you learn that a device is, it works or is made of basic building blocks. As a, comp as a user, you are not going to see all these ones, but you should know that. Where is it coming from? You sh when you look, uh, you, you, you get uh, a, com a network card or a motherboard, you should know that it was not found like that. 
it was built from the basic building blocks. Those the building blocks are like, for example, the transistor, the resistor, the capacitor, the inductors, and so and so forth, and even operational amplifiers. These devices are the basic building blocks. And then, as a engineer, someone who is doing in engineering inclined courses, you should be aware of them. But also, even though we will not spend much time on them, we, you have to be aware that there, there is electronic, electronics fundamentals and electrical fundamentals. We will not delve in too much into electrical fundamentals, but you should know that each and every electronic device it works on power. Now, what are now the components involved? We will have some brief introduction on it. And now, let us uh, uh, move to part three, which is, is actually the maintenance. Why should you have maintenance? Indeed, you should uh, use a device and know how to maintain it. And this one will come after you are aware of that device. Without knowing how it works, you can't maintain it. Right? That's the reason why it comes last. Now, let's start with the first uh, chapter. The first chapter, it is about uh, signals of fundamentals. Oh, signals. What is that? See? Each and every communication is it possible only with signal. See, when you are moving around, you can get a signal through the, your ears. These ones, when you consider your body and the different senses, these are different channels, right? For the computer, we call it input channel and we have output channel, or input device and output device. For your body, you have also the devices. That, but these, we call them in biology, organs. So, yes, you get a signal with your eyes, some of which are visible signals with your eyes. You get the signals with your ears. You get a signal with your mouth, right? Then, then, but we are not going to deal with these kind of signals. We are going, we are interested more in the signals that are going to be processed by the computer. And then these signals are classified into two. Then, before delving into chapter one for signals of fundamentals and multiplexing, let us uh, distinguish or see the outline of this chapter. We will have to distinguish the type of signals and even their character characteristics, right? Then we continue with how you can convert one signal into another signal. Because there are mainly two types of signals. One is analog signal, another is digital signal. Then we know that naturally we have analog signal. This is the continuous signal. This is the signal which is really varying continuously. But the second one, it is analog, a uh, digital. This digital signal, it's a digital which is discrete. So it means that some of its values are not continuous, they are discrete. At a specific point in time, we have a specific value, not infinite number of values. Okay? Because, you know, analog, this is a continuous signal. But uh, digital, it is a discrete signal. Types of signals. We have signals, we have two types of signals. Two types of signals. We have analog and digital signals, digital signals. Now, how are they different? How are they different? Normally, analog signal is natural signal. 
we got it naturally. While digital, you will not get it naturally. You have to do something to get it. You have to act upon natural signal and then to get a digital signal. That's why we are saying that this is artificial signal. You will not go in nature and meet artificial uh, and digital signal. Then, but when you see, boop, oh, that is analog signal. But to get it digitized, you have to act upon this natural signal. So, this analog signal is really continuous. Continuous. While digital signal is discontinuous. It is discrete. Yes, discrete. Another important difference is that they has, by continuous, we mean infinite states. States. While analog, a digital signal, it has only two states. Two states. See? These two states are actually the states that the tiny switches we have in the computer can have, right? These tiny switches are what we call transistors. Right? And then they can be on or off. They can be one or zero. They can be closed or open. Closed or open. ETC. Now, these analog signals will be acted upon, you carry out some, some operations, and then you get digital signal, right? Hence, this one. From analog signal to digital signal, this, that operation is called analog to digital conversion. Analog to digital conversion, ADC. What does it mean? I am talking right now. The voice you are getting is analog signal. It continues, analog signal. But if you want to digitize it, uh, like uh, having this into the computer and be, get it processed by the computer, you need, we need to digitize it. Digitize it. So, you have to carry out this conversion, analog to digital conversion. Now, when we have analog, a digital signal, we can also convert it back into analog. This is called DAC, digital to analog conversion. Digital to analog conversion. And then these operations are mainly done. And when you see someone who is uh, handing, is uh, is making um, your voice registered in his device, what is he doing? There is analog to digital conversion which is going on. What does it mean? The, your microphone picks your voice, right? And now, this voice is going to be amplified, right? To be amplified. And then, it is, of course, there is an ADC. Uh, now, if it is ADC, and it means that the analog, we are, you are picking from, with microphone, right? then it is going to be uh, converted into digital to be amplified and be stored or be uh, transmitted, right? Depending upon 
the, you set up, right? Or stored. Yeah, let's say you store it into your, into your computer. In that case, you have this conversion. Let's consider, for example, the other case. You want to transmit this signal with your analog device. This device will only understand the counterpart, the, the similar nature, the, 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 the signal of the similar nature. And hence, it needs to be converted back into analog. In that case, you will use DAC, digital to analog conversion. That's what is really happening even with modems. Now, after these operations, we will carry out data transfer. Now, we will see the modes that data are transferred. The modes which are series or parallel, parallel transfer or uh, serial transfer. After, for this chapter, we will be carrying out uh, signal multiplexing and demultiplexing. Now, for the moment, for this session, we are going to carry out uh, the first and second. That is, signal representation and uh, characters of the signals. Yes, as you can see in the display, you see that the analog, the signals we see, that we have them. Signal red, green, uh, pink, and uh, the other one, the color is not very much clear. But these four signals are continuous, as you can see there, right? It has infinite states. Yes, it has infinite states. And these ones, these signals, which are analog, should be converted into digital. To the extent that, if, for example, if you have this one, the signal like that, and then it can be like this. In that way, you can see the, this one is one, this is zero, this is one. Right? Of course, we will have to delve into it later. Okay? Now, when you consider, for example, you have, say, the microphone, and this microphone picks analog, it is, this signal is continuous. Then, if you want to convert it into digital, then it becomes this square wave. That, we, that one was analog uh, sine wave, this one is square wave. Where each and every uh, pulse represents a digit, which might be zero or one. Okay? Now, let's say you have now a media which is stored on a CD. This one is already digital. If we want this digital media to be aired through the speaker, and this speaker is really analog compatible, then we will have digital signal converted into analog and then, then, and then amplified and then uh, given out through the speaker. That is this analog system uh, with Digital, system, digital section, which is the source of the signal, right? Now, let's put away or leave analog signals. And now we are going to, to concentrate on digital signals. Indeed, these days, even though the most frequent type of signal is analog, but the one which is being used in our systems is a digital. Yes, you have a computer, you have your telephone, you have almost everything. See, the TV, all these ones are almost digitized, right? 
Hence, digital signals are really important. You should know, you should understand them. These signals, these signals which are now ubiquitous in all these existing systems is made of two states. It's a train of bits, train of bits, which might be one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, what not. It's a train of bits. Now, why? Because each and every state is represented by either one or zero. And now, in that way, we are in a binary system. We are working with binary system. And then, when you have these bits combined, zeros and ones combined in, in a given fashion, then we have what we call codes. Right? We have codes. You know, we will see in chapter two that we have a character representation. Each and every character is represented by a given code. Hey, when you, you, you press a, the key of your computer, let's say seven. Oh, seven is not the one which is going through the wires. It's just the codes, the representation of the, the seven, which goes as a, a train of bits, one and zeros. Ones and zeros. See, the most important thing here we need to, to consider to learn is how actually analog signal is going to be converted into digital signal how analog signal is going to be converted into digital signal. There are two important, two important processes, two important processes through which analog signal is converted into digital signal. Hmm. The one, the first one is called sampling. Sam sampling. Sampling. The second is quantization. Quantization. Sampling. Remember, the courses are interpenetrated. Yes, all complement complementing each other. In research methodology, you have learned, and even in mathematics, you have learned that we have two kinds of variables, right? Two kinds of variables. We have, look, let's consider this, this graph. The graph, the first graph, no, no, the first axis, this horizontal axis, it represents independent variable independent variable. And the second, the vertical axis represents dependent variable. Dependent variable. Now, let's consider your signal. Your signal represented by f of, f of let's say this is x, this is y. Now, a y is equal to f of x. Now, this x is nothing but independent variable. This y is called dependent variable. And hence, when digitizing, when converting analog, that is continuous signal, which is represented by this function, you, go, you are going to digitize it, to make it digital. Then you will have to consider these two steps. You take the independent variable and you sub subdivide it into n equal intervals. We call them samples.
samples assume they are of equal they are equal now these are samples huh? these are samples then by doing this we are sampling as you can see these samples meet the our function at a specific value this is the first step where we are considering independent variable and make samples the second step is to consider dependent variable where we divide the dependent variable into n levels n levels but uh, they should be equal right now when you see you look at this uh, graph you see that the levels and samples meet at some point yes then that can be our probable point which should be considered for example third example this one this one then you consider for example this and this one and this one and this one and this one uh, right you this way you can see you we are getting different points and with these points we can make we can get our signal <laughs> here there are two things things you should remember we will have to we will lose something when we are digitizing we will lose something but that thing is something we can afford to lose what does it mean i have a signal there is information in that signal this information shouldn't be lost but there will be some loss that we can afford to lose some loss that we can afford to lose that is one the second thing is that there is a theorem we will have to follow to 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 use this theorem is called shannon theorem shannon theorem in any given signal uh, even though we will delve into it should know that some of the characteristics of the signal are characteristics of signals are amplitude frequency and duty cycle now i am very much interested in frequency this important resource this important characteristic is actually the one which differentiate we will base on this to differentiate signals and this frequency it is the characteristic we will make sure that we base on how this is, all this theorem is based on how how is it when we sample we are, there is a frequency with which we are sampling this one it is called fs it is sampling frequency sampling frequency now the signal we are going to sample contain some frequency components frequency components and now the highest frequency component is going to be noted as fa the highest frequency component as example audible signal like my voice 
it has a frequency range frequency range from frequency spectrum ranging from 15 hertz up to 20 kilohertz so you can see that this one the highest frequency component is 20 20 kilohertz now i base this one i will make sure that the highest frequency component is known Hmm, someone may ask how will you know the highest frequency component in a given signal which is not human voice audible signal hmm? or else how will i know if it is varying they say it is not even reaching the one i'm having it is not even reaching or else i want between 200 and between 100 and 20 kHz i want to limit to change then we will use filter the filter is a device that will help us to make sure that we know exactly the frequency ranges yes now this fs and fa should be related there is this shannon theorem that is going to be used Shannon theorem The Shannon theorem or Nyquist theorem says if you are digitizing analog signal if you are digitizing analog signal you want to make sure that you depart from this analog signal and you get a digital signal you have to obey this shannon theorem what how does it say the shannon theorem says that if you want to to digitize a, a signal you should use a frequency a sampling frequency fs in such a way that this fre- sampling frequency should be greater or equal to at least eh, should be greater than or equal to twice the highest frequency component in the signal or the signal to be sampled yes if if we don't you don't obey to this law this law if you don't is not followed what will happen you will lose what you can't afford to lose that's what you should make sure you are following this rule this is called shannon theorem or nyquist theorem right now after you follow this one then the signal you will get it will be also converted back into analog yes now let's now continue with the quantization the sampling when it is done following this relationship this equation yeah uh, indeed Uh, it is uh, in equation but uh, in practice we will be working with equation right now if we follow this one then only we can proceed with quantization yes quantization we will have to consider what to consider the output variable then i uh, some in a few minutes i was talking about how to make sure that we are sure of fa fa indeed should be known should be determined without failing if we use what we call filters filter 
filter is the circuit or let's say yes it's a circuit that will make sure that we are getting the frequency components we are sure of why because the filter has what we call cutoff frequency what does it mean let's have we have a signal which is who, who, whose frequencies are, this frequency, frequency spectrum are ranging from F, uh, F, F1 up to F10. These are the frequency components. But we want to cut, to make sure that the highest should be F7. In that case, we will use a filter. Now, what kind of filter? It's a filter that will allow only the lowest up to F7. And then F7, more than F7, are limited, blocked. This is what you call low pass filter. Low pass filter. It makes sure that it has the highest. This frequency, cutoff frequency, cutoff filter, cutoff frequency is only the highest value we have in with a low pass filter. If we use a high pass filter, then the lowest frequency component is the one which will be known. We don't know the highest, we will know the lowest. Now, if we, know, we use band pass filter, band pass filter, that's a combination of low pass filter and high pass filter. Meaning that this, look that, for example, this is high pass filter cut off frequency, high pass filter, filter cut off frequency, this is low pass filter cut off frequency. Yeah, someone may say, why do you put low pass filter cut off frequency higher than high pass filter cut off frequency? Yes. It should be like that, otherwise we can't have band pass filter. Then, this way, in this way, we will have band pass filter. This is what is normally uh, in practice. Otherwise, without filters, we could be having one radio station, right? Because other, st other station will be speeding over in existing ones, and the interference will be too much to uh, to tolerate, right? Now, we, I think we, you are clear with uh, sampling. Well, we sample because we know the highest frequency component in the signal we need to, to sample, right? Now, the second part, the second uh, step is quantization. Then quantization consists in knowing actually the full scale of analog signal, full scale of analog signal. And we will need to compute quantization step, quantization step. Yes, did you see, you have, this is quantization step. Chu, 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 chu. This is a quantization step. And now, these quantization steps are computed based on the full scale of analog signal. Now, this full scale of analog signal is nothing but what you see here. If it is the minimum, this is the highest. And now, this is what we call a full scale analog uh, range. Now, we will say, Quantization step is equal to R divided by 2 power n. Hmm. Now, someone, something new here. R is the full range of analog signal. This n is the number of bits we should be using. Hey, we want to make sure that, for example, 8 corresponds to, if n is equal to 3, then we say, oh, it should be 1, 1, 1. Right? Seven, you know, in the discrete mathematics, seven is, uh, eight will not be there. We should be having zero up to seven because we need to have eight levels, 
right? Eight levels. Now, these eight levels is going to be corresponding to 000, 001, 010, 011, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, Hence, we should be have eight levels. Now, this quantization step is going to depend upon the system we are using and the full range analog values. Now, after computing quantization step, then we will know each and every value corresponding to each level. Now, let's say, for example, from zero, point zero, we have the range of analog values f ranging from one value less than x less than or equal to uh, any other value now what will be this value what will be this value this value the first value is the level starting level right starting the level now the second value Right? This is value, this is the other value. This value is nothing but the, the previous value plus Q. Right? Plus Q. Now, the sec third value will be the second value plus Q. Then the fourth value will be the third value plus Q. Right? Like stairs in our buildings. Now, then you will have a digital value, let's say this is corresponding to 0, 0, because we are using n equal to 3, and then the first value will be a value we consider here. Now, even though we see that we need to have the best practice, here the best practice to be related that we should consider half, two, half two, then we only consider with Q, the full Q, then consider the full Q, then consider the full Q, etc. Now, why actually do we start with half Q? It's a, that is the best practice which was found to be reducing arising errors. And hence, with R, depending upon, because we are going to practice it, in a question, in a, a specific uh, function that will make sure that we know R. For example, if the value is varying from zero to three, then we know that the maximum, the maximum value minus minimum value is R, right? So our R is a three. Now, if N is a three, it will be Q is equal to three divided by 2 power 3, which is equal to 3 divided by 8, which is equal to 3.75. In that case, from this value, we can compute the remaining there, right? So we will take a full um, uh, our time to make sure that we practice everything, but making sure that all these theories are very clear to you. Yeah, anyone having a question, you can ask. But remember that digitization is a process. It is not one step process. It is a two step process where we carry out sampling and quantization, right? And it is the thing you are getting whenever you see someone who is taking someone's voice, but it is, he, this voice is going to be processed in his computer. It is not possible to take it straight away without acting on it. So we act on it through the digitization, with uh, what you call digitization. But this process is a two-step process. I thank you very much. We will have to continue practicing this with a specific example. Right? Where we will do all eight steps. This is the first step. Then we could be continuing then until we reach one, one, one. Then we will be completing the whole table and everyone should be able to know how this process 
is carried out. Thank you very much. I hope anyone having a question is ready to ask. Otherwise, I'm done with this, uh, this section and uh, later we will continue with uh, our course. And uh, this course is really interesting. Be interested and don't f consider it uh, uh, very difficult. It will be you were taught. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.